Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, New Flight Images, and in this short review, I'm going to have a look at a desk light that I use as part of my procedure for checking out prints. Now, this is called the Graphilite Mark II. Uh, it's uh, based on Otlite, it's O T T L I T E uh, technology. Um, I used to have, well, I still have got, it's just been moved to Karen's desk, uh, the Graphilite original, which had a fluorescent tube, uh, a task lamp in it. You opened it up, it lit. Um, I've got a review of that as well. Uh, this is all on the North Light Images website if you're curious for technical details. This one, however, the Mark II Graphilite, uh, it still has the same basic idea. It's a device that opens up, sits on your desk, and it's a light, so it doesn't give glare. Uh, if you're at this height, I can see the light goes underneath. Now, this one uses LEDs. And uh, the mix of uh, LEDs it's got in it, by switching between them, gives a variation of color temperature. So you can set this one to 5K, 5,000K, uh, uh, which is roughly daylight, uh, 4,000K, which is closer to fluorescent lighting you'd find in shops and the like, and some LED lighting you'd find in homes. And it has a low 2,700K uh, setting, which is a warm LED light. Now, um, I would say that it's not the same as tungsten lighting, even though the color temperature is fairly similar. Um, but I come back to how you actually use something like this. Now, it has an external power supply, it's 12 volts in. It has, usefully, a, a USB 5 volt socket at the back. So uh, I've used it already for charging battery packs and also for charging the uh, microphone system I'm now using, the wireless one. Um, 2.1 amps it's rated, but it is only five, uh, five volts. So there are some things that require higher voltage on USB for charging that won't necessarily work with it, but it's fine for a lot of devices. The actual thing itself, um, say it, it folds up like that. There's uh, the LEDs behind this diffusing panel. And, um, and this is where I, I did, I will admit, think this is a bit gimmicky. There's a clock and a thermometer and uh, a calendar. Um, I have, this has been sitting on my desk for a while and I have found myself glancing at it to read the time. So yes, it is useful. It's uh, controlled, there's a battery backup in the back here to, that keeps it going if you don't need this powered all the while. But anyway, let's just switch it on. It's touch sensitive, so I'm just going to put uh, this on and uh, it's come on at its warm color temperature. Now. I'm showing this on video, so I'm not entirely certain how this will come out, but this is a relatively warm setting. And it's, if I just lightly touch it, it changes brightness, goes up to full brightness there. So that's, that's the warm setting. Now, if I hold the button for a length of time, it now changes to a mixed setting. Now this is quite bright. I'll put it on a dimmer setting there for, for that. Now, this is a mix of the two lights. Um, it's a good general purpose light. If you want it for lighting something on your desk while you're doing fine detail or something like that, the 4000K setting is the best one because it's using all the LEDs, so it's brighter. Um, it's more typical, if you're looking at prints, what you might see for some kinds of um, lighting in rooms where people have got cool lighting really cool lighting, 5000K. That's what I'm going to use for printer evaluation. So I'm just going to press this once again for a length of time, and it's now gone to the cooler color temperature. Now this is daylight. Now um, this color temperature should be even cooler than the screen here, which I've got set at about 4000. Um, this is what I would use for having a look at a print. Um, so if I've got a print and I want to see what it's like, this gives me excellent diffuse lighting and it's great for looking at detail. Um, I would say that if you're, I'm just gonna change the temperature back to the lower temperature and then back up to the mixed temperature. This should now be roughly the same color temperature as the screen here, which is set to 4,000. This lighting is about 3,000 in here. So you, you, it is a bit of a mix and match situation when you're trying to do this sort of stuff. But if I wanted to check a print out um, for color, 
I'd use the uh, 5000 setting, it's the highest setting. Now, I've got lots of photos in the main review which show you different examples of how this is set up. Um, it's a very simple device. Uh, I use it for checking print detail. I look at, use it also for seeing whether under different color temperatures the print's going to look a bit off. Um, th there are examples of photos showing how processing stuff with a color uh, checker card in it to show you the details. But it's a light. Um, there's not a lot more I can say to it than that. Now, one minor quibble, it comes with this gray, neutral gray mat. Now, even after some time of uh, putting this under several heavy books, it's still got the original creases in that it came out of the box where it was folded up. Um, Knowing this sort of plastic, I think it needs probably a good solid week or two of heavy pressure on it with books to flatten it out. And then if you roll it up and put it in a drawer, when you take it out again, it will have a curve. That is my only real irritation with the, uh, with the device. It works. Um, it's a great little accessory. I've got a proper viewing print viewing stand, but that is many, many times the price of this. Now, this is the Graphilite 2 uh, Color Confidence in the UK, supplied around about £70, including tax. Um, so it's a useful adjunct for uh, printing. And it's also, and the reason the old one sat on my desk for so many years, it's a great general purpose light for when you need strong lighting that isn't going to interfere when you're looking at a monitor. Just one little bit to finish out on that. If you are evaluating um, a print, never ever evaluate the prints directly next to a monitor. Um, our visual system has a habit of deciding whatever it thinks is white is white and adjusting color balances on the fly without you even realizing. So be very careful when you're trying to match prints and things. And don't forget though that, uh, that actually you can never truly match a print to a screen. You could get part way there, but the whole idea is essentially flawed because they're two different things. But there you go, there's a little device, um, quite convenient, folds away, and there we go. There's a Graphilite Mark II. As I say, have a look at the written review. I'll put the link into the, uh, into the notes for the video. If you've got any questions, um, please do let me know. So thanks very much.